Hey professionals, so I've been using Toko Graphics for the last eight weeks and it's worked so well, I've canceled all other motion graphics subscriptions. And here's the kicker, if you know a few tricks in Resolve and Fusion, you can really make these graphics stand out to a commercial quality. It's simpler than you think to achieve. So in this video, I'll take you through real life examples, two shots that were for client paying projects and two personal ones where I've actually used Toko Graphics to speed up my workflow. But why does this approach work so well? And is it really feasible to rely on just one pack for nearly all your needs? And I also want to address a cost that goes beyond dollars and I'm talking about time, which I'll dive into later. I'm going to dive deep into this tool and showcase some of the deal makers and deal breakers so you can see if this is the right pack for you. And of course, you can find the link to this motion graphics pack in the description below, where I will make a small commission on top at no cost to you. Firstly, why is this pack so powerful? So I wanted to start this conversation with one of the less obvious yet incredibly powerful aspects of this pack, it's comprehensive coverage of graphics typically seen in digital product ads. So as a video editor cross producer, we know that our talent is crucial, but it can only take us so far in landing higher paying jobs. To really break through and aim higher, we need to target better, higher paying clients. One lucrative area, digital products, think apps, software as a service and the like. Why? Because videos for digital products often have a much more significant impact on sales compared to other types of businesses such as local restaurants. When you're creating content for digital product, you're not just making a video, you're directly influencing the purchasing journey of nearly all their customers. On top of this, a lot of graphics packs contain things like light leaks, glitch effects, and crazy transitions. They're cool, sure. But in my experience, they're rarely used in paid commercials and especially the good paying kind. So this is where Toko Graphics Pack really shined to me. They don't just have flashy effects and things that people would find cool in music videos. It's just the basics that all the common motion graphics I'd expect to see in a high paying commercial. So obviously it's a one time payment purchase. It doesn't cover everything, but it covers 99, 95% of everything you need as a paid commercial editor. Let's get into what's actually in this pack. And another thing that's absolutely mind blowing about this is the sheer volume of graphics it contains. We're talking a whopping 2,250 motion graphics. My personal favorite categories are the kinetic titles, callouts, infographics, and the huge standout is the devices. And when I actually show you how these are made, it'll blow your mind. But let's address the elephant in the room when it comes to bulk packs for any software, the concerns of filler and quality. Now about fillers, you know those packs that claim they got thousands of templates but are actually just a few hundred with multiple variations? Well, with Toko, I've looked through it and I can assure you that the number 2250 is a true reflection of its quantity in my opinion. The variations are genuinely distinct and valuable. But quantity doesn't mean anything if the quality isn't there. So the burning question, are these templates of commercial quality and customizable or are these locked off pre-rendered plates? Once again, Toko Graphics passes with flying colors these are fully customizable assets and more customizable than I would actually expect. Take the devices template, for example. In my experience, other bulk packs usually pre-render backgrounds to save space when delivering, but no, these are actual 3D objects all connected up properly in Fusion. This means I can change camera angles, add depth of field blur. Toco did not have to go this hard when they created this pack, but they did. And they're not just great quality assets, but these assets are versatile and quick to adapt. One of the standout features is their auto resizing shapes. Whether it's fitting text within a shape or having the graphics auto format from horizontal to vertical video, they handle it all with ease. To give you a real world example, here's one of the commercials we'll be demoing later. Now, we actually ended up creating this text message effect by scratch at the beginning, then we discovered Toco and we implemented that instead. And you'll see that when we converted from a horizontal format ad to a vertical format, the Toco graphics resized perfectly, but the graphics we had designed in-house they turned into a hot mess real quick. Again, I'm pointing this out to show just the level of thought and care that's gone into creating this graphics pack. But you can't just drag and drop these motion graphics and expect these clients to be happy. You have to bring a certain level of control and design. So without further ado, let me show you some real examples of where I've used Toco these last few weeks. So the first shot we're looking at is this countdown video I created for my live stream on my YouTube channel and mainly focusing on the background, which was created with Toco Graphics. If you want to learn about the countdown timer, I will leave a link to Casey Farris's video where I learned about that. So going into this background, I chose Toco Background 51. You can use this background in both the edit page and the Fusion page. Here, I'm using it in Fusion. So the immediate thing I felt was that this background was calling too much attention for what I needed. So I used a time speed node to slow it down 50% and then I added a mid-strength blur. And finally, using Toco's controls, I changed the background to some more 
on-brand colors. Hint, I was going for the colors you typically see in a Resolve timeline. Now, this background was really draining my processing power, and as you can see in the playback, it was taking quite a long time. And to render a 15 minute video would take literal hours almost the whole day. But the background actually runs on a four second loop. So I pre-rendered the background in a lossless quality, then reapplied the pre-rendered video and turned on the loop. This allowed me to render a 15 minute video in minutes instead of hours. And that's how I created this background for my live stream countdown. So next we're gonna be looking at a shot I did for an actual commercial that I got paid for. And we're gonna be covering the text message effect and how it's auto sizing feature works. And on top of this, I'm gonna be giving you a little personal trick that I use on a lot of my motion graphics to really help make sure that these motion graphics feel like they fit in the commercial or the shot. And so you don't just look like a drag and dropper, you're an actual editor. So first create a new fusion composition and place it over the top of the footage. Next, let's add a text message. Here I chose Toco Message 01. Write in the text what we want. And yes, as you can see, the text bubble auto adjusted its size to wrap around whatever we're writing. And finally, I reposition the message to the right of the subject with the built-in position controls. Now, a side note, we need these message animations to line up the specific statements the subject says, but it's really tedious to time up graphics by jumping out of the Fusion tab, looking at the shot, going back in, nudging the keyframes, rinse and repeating multiple times until things do line up. So here's a quick trick to fix this. We can actually load the timeline from the edit page into Fusion without baking it into the graphic. Here's how. Step one is to create a media in node and change the media source to background. This will pull all the layers below the Fusion composition into the comp itself. So now when we press play, we can see in here what we are putting our graphics over. So once you've created the first animation and positioned it right, I want to now create a second text message for this shot. So in this case, I'm just going to duplicate it as it's already got a lot of the settings that I want and I'm going to just change the message to what I need. Now coming back to the text motion graphic, we can make this effect line up with the audio. And typically the easier and faster solution is to use a speed modifier. You can, if you want to use the keyframes, as you can see on the right here, but typically speaking, it's a lot more finicky, especially with templates. And I prefer using a speed modifier. And I can see from the keyframes that I need this animation to start at the 44th frame. So I just set the delay on the speed modifier to 44. And finally, I'm going to show you a really cool trick that helps me blend motion graphics into shots and make them feel like they belong. And that's to add a shader on top of the graphic so that the lighting from the shot actually matches the graphic we're putting on top of it. To do this, I simply get a background node, change it to a gradient and give it a darker and brighter side. Then comparing the gradient to the shot, I will position it so that the brighter and darker match the lighting direction from the shot. Then I will add the background on top of the text message with a merge node and set the apply mode to multiply. Now you may notice that the graphic no longer has any transparency. To simply fix this, connect the graphic output to the matte input of the merge and voila, everything works like a charm. This adds a beautiful shading on top of the graphic and makes it feel like it belongs. Now, in my opinion, it's these kinds of little touches that separate professional editors from drag and droppers. And if we were just to have a look at the shot as it is right now, you'll find that it's pretty plain and pretty boring. Just to give it a bit more dynamic energy for this kind of commercial, I'm going to create some dynamic zooms using an adjustment clip. Here's what we've pre-made before. Essentially, it's just a single transform node with keyframes happening at the specific times that the text message is getting displayed. And we're just using a smooth zoom with motion blur turned on. Can the property be knocked over? Is the property in a flood affected path? So the next shot we are working on is similar in that it's a simple graphical text element popping out of a laptop. So we follow the same procedure as before. This time I'm choosing Toco Social Media 06. But now I really wanna make it clear that this message is popping out of the computer. With this camera movement, it's a bit hard to tell what's going on and where's what's supposed to be. The solution is to attach the graphic to the computer. So here's how to track and add motion graphics to moving elements. Step one is to add a planar tracker to the shop. Draw a shape roughly around what you wanna track. Drag your playhead to the beginning, set the reference time, change the tracker to a hybrid point slash area, change the motion type to translation and rotation. Press the play key to begin the tracking. This will take a moment, but once it's done, we can export a planar tracker. Now we can simply add this planar tracker to our already created graphic, line up the position, and there you go. Just like that, it's now attached to the computer. But 
Let's not stop there. Let's also add a drop shadow to really paint where this graphic is in space. To do this, we can simply get the drop shadow node and add it after the planar tracker. And I'm going to roughly match the darkness and position based on the shadow I've spotted on the couch. Now, technically, most would look at this shot and go, we need the shadow to stop after the couch. So we need to manually cut out the shadow or roto out the couch and have the shadow drop away. And that's technically correct. But manual rotoscoping or even using magic mask in this situation would take quite a bit of time and there's no guarantee it'll look good. And the difference between success and not isn't how much you get paid, but how much you make over time. So finding quick solutions to make a shot work is paramount to your success. So here's how I made this shot work as quickly as possible. You take the drop distance slider and increase it until the drop shadow is fully over the couch and shirt. And that's it. <laughs> Just like that. We could have spent a whole 20 minute tangent in real life and it would have taken a minute to explain on here how to do a rotoscoping effect and cut the shadow out so that it's cutting off from the couch. But instead we were able to do that whole tangent of 20 minutes of work in a second by just choosing to make the drop shadow slightly lower. And that's some of the key thinking that's helped me achieve better margins on the projects I work on. And finally, there's this commercial I made for my Halloween text pack for Snap Captions. And here I wanted to focus on the devices section. Now I'm not gonna go as deep as I did with the previous videos as this was really easy. I chose my preferred device animation from Toco's pack, dragged it onto my timeline, opened it up in Fusion, added my footage into the device screen and it was easy as that. Now, if you're an advanced user, you can dive deeper into these shots such as reposition them in 3D space, add depth of field blur, or even change the device colors. But we won't need to go there now. It's just nice to know that you can if your job requires it. Now you've seen what this pack is capable of, I think we should go over if the cost is worth it. And if we're looking at costs, then the first thing we should look at is its licensing agreement. So if you're thinking about buying Toco Graphics, you'll see there's two licensing options, the regular license and the extended license. Now, reading the terms and conditions had me very worried. I was interpreting the legalese to mean that I would need to buy a regular license for every project I worked on. And this obviously makes it go from an awesome deal to pretty horrible. And I reached out to my contact who told me about Toco Graphics and he explained that it was a common misconception. The correct interpretation is if you're making this video and the end users do not have to pay to watch it, then a regular license is enough and certainly you can make as many videos as you desire. So commercials and social media content is fine as long as no one's actually paying to watch it, which in that case, most of the time it's not. But if it's paid gated content like Netflix, cinema, or even courses, you would need to look at getting the appropriate license. I'm not a lawyer. I'm gonna let you look at that if you're in one of those situations as it's probably best you figure that out. <laughs> in terms of price, to me, this was pretty much a nothing cost. The amount of time this pack saves literally makes up for its cost and more on a single project. And on top of this, Toco allowed me to cancel other subscriptions, which that alone, again, saved me hundreds of dollars a year. And something I didn't realize or think of at all was a hidden cost. And that's time spent browsing and downloading when you go through your typical subscription sites. The amount of time I saved by not having to go online, log in, search through various packs, download them, realize it's not as customizable as I needed. So I go all the way back to that website and rinse and repeat until I get a pack. That whole process is just a huge time-wasting process. With the Toco pack, I can literally go to the effects tab, find what I'm looking for 99% of the time and add it on the timeline just like that. To me, this initial investment has literally made itself back over 60 times in the last two months alone. I would consider this a severely underpriced pack if I'm being honest. That is my experience. I'm a full-time editor. It's important to make an assessment on how well this will apply to you. And also, I want to end this video with a warning to new people. I've been talking this pack up about how incredible it is, and it really is absolutely incredible. But I just want to talk about some of the caveats, especially if you're a new person. It's important to understand that while Toco graphics can immensely streamline your process and elevate your graphic quality, it does require a foundational knowledge of Resolve and Fusion. So if you're new to either, Toco does have 50 effects free for you to try out first. Familiarize yourself with those features and capabilities and see if you're comfortable. And this is also a good segue into the most common roadblock people get with this pack, installing templates in DaVinci Resolve. It can be a daunting experience, especially for beginners. It's a process filled with pitfalls like black screens and laggy images. It's super frustrating when you're left wondering, is it me or is this template just not playing ball? 
here's the kicker, 99% of the time, all of these issues, including the ones I've seen from all the reviews, boils down to not properly replacing fonts when installing the template. And I mean actually replacing the fonts, not just adding the ones you don't already have installed on your system. And let me explain this crucial reason why, and it's got to do with font styles. Let's say your computer has Roboto installed. Great, but do you have all the styles, bold, italic, light? You've got to ensure not just the base font, but all of its different styles are installed. And your computer doesn't check for styles when installing new fonts. So most people click on and install a Roboto font and you need the Roboto bold, but the computer already sees it's got Roboto, but it's only got light and medium. So the computer says it's good. So most people will go, okay, we can just skip this. And now you don't have the right style of fonts installed. And now your graphics pack don't work or you get this black screen. So my golden rule here is stick to the readme file that comes with the pack like it's your new best friend. And I'm gonna add a little bit of personal advice on top of this. When you're dealing with fonts, make sure you're not just breezing past them. If your computer tells you a font's already installed, don't just skip it. Make sure you hit replace or merge, as this will ensure you have the right font and styles installed. But I hope that didn't scare you because once you get past this initial setup process and the pains involved, this pack is an absolute dream to have. It's saved me a lot of money. It's made me a lot of money. It's saved me a lot of time. And I've been using that for more productive things. It's just honestly one of the best packs I've had in my editing career, and I don't mean that lightly. And just to be clear, I'm not actually paid to produce this video. I do get an affiliate commission, but I am under no obligation to say anything or any what's or make any kind of commitments to this video. This is my genuine opinion, and I would not share anything like this with my audience unless I truly believed in it myself. So I really hope you found this video interesting. Thank you so much for watching it. And as always, it's a joy to be able to make these for you. And until next time, I will catch you around.